going into another player who has declined his player option, this one was also expected, um, is Draymond Green, who declined his player option. Now, the I think the overwhelming thought is that he's going to re-sign with Golden State. It's just a matter of making sure he gets a long-term contract in place. Mm-hmm. Um, but anytime you become an unrestricted free agent, you got to ask the question. And I saw that they were talking about it on first take earlier, too. Um, a, can the Warriors continue to compete for championships if they were not to re-sign Draymond Green? Uh, I mean, it's tough. Like, people try to discredit Draymond a lot. He does a lot for this Warriors team. Like, he does all of the dirty work. He plays – he's the, the heart of the defense. He facilitates the offense. Like, he does a lot for this team. Like, if, if Draymond wasn't to come back, their defense, I feel like, would plummet. I feel like their defense would be go down the drain if, if Draymond wasn't on this team. So, can they compete without Draymond? I don't know, man. I really don't. I don't I don't think so, especially the way that we talked about Denver. As much as we try – we didn't really talk bad about the Suns like that. We obviously didn't recognize they're still a talented team. I think they're – right now, even if they don't make any moves, I think they're a better team than, than the Warriors. I think they're better than the Warriors right now. So with Phoenix, with Denver, with the Lakers, a young up-and-coming Sacramento who already took them seven games, mm, I don't know. I, I don't think they can really compete if they don't have Draymond because, like I said, I feel like their defense would just go down the drain. And I feel like if they lose Draymond, like if he walked and they lose him for nothing, they don't really have the cap space to replace him with anybody. So if you let Draymond go, it's like you're just banking on these young players stepping up and stepping up huge. Now, not just taking a step to where they can contribute a little bit. Like, you need them to play quality minutes and be key, key players in a championship-level team. And I don't, I don't see them taking that leap, especially if we already talked about they weren't developed enough to even get minutes in a, a postseason series. Like, I, I don't see them them taking that that leap that they would need. So, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't see them contending if they lose Draymond for nothing. Yeah, and for what it's worth, right – New GM there, uh, Mike Dunleavy. So congrats to him. Takes over for Bob Myers. Um, he's been vocal you know, in the last couple of days saying that they would like to keep Draymond. Um, so they're going to do their best to figure out, you know, what makes the most sense for them as an organization. But obviously they have the ability to, even if they don't win another championship, like have the, having these three guys play their entire careers with the Warriors is worth it. I think to them as an organization for their fan base Mm -hmm. to keep them there so that that is their legacy. Like they were able to bring four championships to a team um, and all played their entire careers there, which I think I'd imagine is something that all three of them would want, Mm -hmm. but it then comes down to how much money are you willing to sacrifice for that? Because Steph He's going to get, he's always going to be priority number one. He's always going to get his bag and he has the ability to probably get one more good contract. Mm-hmm. So, with that in mind, how much are you able to give Clay? How much are you able to give Draymond? How does that keep you all in title contention moving forward? Um, there are reports that Kuminga is on the trade block. He already had to get rid of Wiseman. Obviously, Jordan Poole has been in talks. We did a whole segment on it already, but this ability to try to have these two timelines simultaneously where you got the old guys led by, you know, the core of Steph, Clay, and Dre, and we've got this championship window now, but at the same time, we've got the future of the Warriors, and they're going to just develop, and it's going to be this transition, and we're never going to have to rebuild. That is shattering right now. <laughs> right. And at the same time that the young core is – falling apart they aren't able to keep it together they aren't able to develop the way they thought they were going to be these guys are getting older clay i think is not disrespectful to say does not look like the same clay before the injuries which is completely understandable going through two back-to-back very catastrophic injuries obviously the acl and the achilles um i think he's taken you know regress as a defender obviously the shooting has you know been up and down which is always going to be a reality of a you know a catch and shoot shooter like him um he's getting older Steph is getting older Draymond is getting older like 
that championship window is only going to continue to get smaller and smaller. So, um, again, as much as it makes sense to keep all of these guys here to make sure that they retire as Warriors, you do have to take a look as an organization and say, we've already had to deal Wiseman, right? If we really want to have these two timelines, does bringing Draymond back, bringing him back make the most sense for us to contend now and continue to develop guys like Kuminga and Moses Moody like for the future? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so with that in mind, I want to talk about some potential teams that Draymond could go to and contribute on. The first ones I'm going to throw out there are Portland and Miami. The fit with Portland, I think, makes a ton of sense to me because... A, we already know what he can do with a prolific shooter. You don't need mm-hmm. to really touch more on that. Him and right. Damian Lillard would be a very similar fit to him and Steph. Mm-hmm. Um, he provide a great defensive anchor for that team. Um, I think Nurkic is probably on the way out in Portland. So they can right. bring in another center, but be confident that they have another guy who's switchable onto bigs, um, mm-hmm. switchable onto perimeter guys, and just – from a, a defensive standpoint, is going to be your your guy. Like, he's going to run that side of the floor. Um, we know what he's going to bring from an effort perspective. Obviously, championship DNA, all things that you want if you are the Portland Trailblazers and so-called building a team to win a championship around Damian Lillard now. Um, I think the fit there in Portland makes a lot of sense. Miami, not as much. I've seen it talked about on a couple of different uh, – different outlets. I know they talked about it on the Dunker Spot podcast. I get it like I do, but it feels like the the opposite of what the Suns are doing, right? Like the right. Suns already had a great <laughs> offense. Yeah. And you just say, well, let's just go all in and we add Bradley Beal. Mm-hmm. Miami held Denver well below their typical offensive output in the finals. Their offense just was limited but let's just say well shoot <laughs> we had jimmy and bam what if we just add Draymond? right if ain't we really just, just gonna be on lock we like, don't we gotta just score we just gotta right. stop people from scoring. <laughs> you heard jimmy they said they don't gotta score 100 points to win they just gonna stop you but listen if draymond goes to miami they're gonna win games and the scores are gonna be like it was in the 70s and the 80s like <laughs> they, they're gonna win games 74 to 70 like they're just gonna play defense but no, I like the I like the Portland fit a lot because I like like you said like it's basically like playing with another not he's not obviously not as good as Steph but that's the closest thing in the league that you're gonna get to Steph as far as yeah. play styles as far as talent level so I, I I love that fit a lot I just think they would also need to bring in obviously if they're gonna contend they would need to bring in someone else another scoring option I feel like they would then I feel like they would be in that position to move off of the number three pick and bring in another like all-star to all-NBA caliber player. I don't know who that would be for them, but I feel like they would be in a position to do that because now they would have an actual quality roster around them. And I think a, a pretty good one that can that can make some noise in the West. So I like that Portland fit a lot. And the Miami one, like you said, they just <laughs> – that zone is going to be – oh, my God. Who's scoring? They're going to switch everything. Everything is going to switch. <laughs> <laughs> everything is going to switch. It is going to be hell trying to score on that Miami defense, but – like you said, that's not really what they need. I they need another scoring option there in Miami. Like defense wasn't the problem. Um, leadership, hustle, and it, all that wasn't the problem either. Like all the stuff Draymond brings, that heat culture, they it comes with it. <laughs> it comes with that. So I feel like that is isn't really what they need. But I can I can see it. You know what I mean? I could see it working. It's just the offense would just be a little bit tough. It would still you would still have all that pressure on Jimmy to score. You would have pressure on Tyler Hero to score. So. It, it would be the same. Defense would be better, but I, don't know, I, I like I like those two fits. Portland, definitely a lot more than Miami, but I like those two fits. But it's funny because you know where Draymond wants to go. He wants to go play with Big Bro in L.A. That's where he wants to oh. go. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't wa- I don't want it. I don't want that to happen. But I just I think it's funny how everyone, just because he's so close to LeBron, everyone, that's the first thing they think when they think of 
oh, Draymond's leaving. He's going to go team up with LeBron. Like, I don't see that happening, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think it's needed. It's like, not. I don't know. I don't. Where like do that. you like Vanderbilt becomes like almost unplayable? Literally, but I, like, I, I would like I like Vanderbilt in that spot more because he could guard in the perimeter. I think Draymond is a good defender. I'm not having Draymond. Vanderbilt is a better perimeter defender. That's not a knock on yeah, Draymond. Yeah, just, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't. We. I don't think the Draymond fit. Over there would would make sense really. I don't even want Anthony Davis playing the five anymore. I want him to play the four, so he don't have to bang with those big guys down there and keep getting hurt or getting worn down. I don't I don't want him doing that. So I just think it's hilarious because anytime he takes a picture with LeBron or he's doing something, it's just <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, I, he they want to go team up. Draymond wants to go team up, but I think that's hilarious. But I, I like you said, I really like that Portland fit a lot. If he was to leave the Warriors, yeah, all, all the clutch sports guys, they always. It's yeah. always some they think it's colluding going on every time they get together. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so I'm interested to see how that plays out in Golden State. Um, I think they'll probably get it done. Um, just it makes a lot of sense. I know I noted it before on the pod, but obviously being from you know Saginaw, Michigan, Saginaw, Michigan, um, you know I think I'm pretty sure he grew up a Pistons fan. He's talked about on podcasts before. Um, he would think it would be cool to be able to play for the Pistons. Um, again, mm-hmm. obviously, it's going away from title contention. And yeah, it, I think it'd be a, a great fit for that roster. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'd be a good vet for those guys to continue to develop. Um, you know, playing him and, and Jalen Duran together would be great. Um, and obviously, Kay Cunningham and Jay and Ivy. And then you bring in, you know, maybe a guy like Cam Whitmore in the draft. And you have a very nice young team that can start to really you know, take that next step and like, you know, maybe build an, out in a way that like a team like the Thunder has, or, you know, you were kind of in this lottery space for so long. Okay, well, now let's, let's take the next step. Let's compete. Let's try to get into the play and let's try to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so bringing in a guy like that, I think, you know, that makes it a lot of sense, but and, and you can get more money, right? Like if that's what you're yeah. going after, the Pistons can get you more, I would imagine, than what the Warriors are going to be able to give you just in terms of flexibility and you know future outlook um with like i said that championship window like they're going to want to maximize that now and go and state and the most flexibility they have is trying to shrink y'all's contracts down um so that they do have the ability to build out rosters to be competitive so um interested to see how that plays out there 